Hey developers, so today I have something really special and cool. We are looking at three developer myths that you might have around marketing and selling and buying things online. I don't know if you're like me, but as a developer, I have a few ideas on what I like to buy and what I not don't like to buy. And before I started getting into this whole online business and selling courses, I had some really bad misconceptions and it really limited me on what I could sell online. So this is a quick video and I'm gonna discuss three myths that you may think are true but are actually false regarding marketing for developers. Hey, and I wanna say this is really cool because my podcast, Self Taught or Not, is back. Now I will put a link in the description below. So if you click on that link, you can go listen to the full hour long conversation between me and my buddy Dylan Israel, AKA Coding Tutorials 360, AKA Self Taught Developer who's made over $100,000 without a CS degree, without a coding bootcamp, and just got hired on as a fang. So this is a really cool season. I'm glad we brought it back. If you don't know, this is just with me and my buddy Dylan. We talk about all the cool topics in, in development and, and what's happening in our lives. So check out selftaughtornot.com or just click the link in the description. And also I'll put a link in the description to my mailing list. If you click on that and you sign up for it, you'll get notified every time we have a new episode and one of these cool new YouTube videos comes out. So that's a quick plug for me, but I have a full hour long conversation about marketing 101 for developers. So if you've ever thought about making money online as a developer, which is a really good place to do it actually, it's really perfect for us to make sure you listen to that full episode. We go into a lot more detail than what we're gonna talk today about in this video. Okay, so why should you believe me when I talk about uh, marketing for developers? First, I don't wanna sound scammy or anything like that, but I have sold thousands of copies of books. I have two books, one called one called uh, The Ember.js Cookbook and the other called Vue.js in Action. Um, one was released a couple of years ago and the one was released a couple of years before that. So I've sold thousands of copies of those books. And I've also, last year in 2020, I released four different courses, a lot of great information, especially on Vue.js. If you're looking to learn Vue, by the way, I'll have some links below. And I made a, you know, a little bit over $30,000 on all those different courses. So you know, I've, I've done it before and I know what works and what doesn't work. And I'm still learning too. I'm also getting a lot of feedback from people on what courses they like. But uh, this is a few things that I've learned. The first kind of myth I've heard a lot, and this is something I heard right when I started looking into uh, making money online as a developer is that developers don't buy anything. I think this is a pretty common myth that developers are people, but but the thing is developers people, they're just like everyone else. If you can save time or money, people will buy it. And I think that's that's the common theme. If I can provide you a course to learn a topic that will take you know five hours to, to learn versus something that will take you, you know, like 20 hours of searching the net for different blog articles, I think that's a lot of value. It's also a lot of value if you're looking for, to get a new job as a Vue developer or React developer and I help you teach you the fundamentals of those frameworks and libraries and you're able to get a job for $100,000, you know, paying you know, $500 for a course or $100 or $50 for a course makes a lot of sense. So like anything else, developers do buy things all the time. I know a lot of companies restrict developers when they can buy. But you know they pay for things. They pay for Slack. They pay for tools. Um, it just it's pretty common. And us as developers pay a lot for education. And I know that for a fact. And there's a lot of companies that target developers. I mean, I've seen hosting companies targeting education companies. There's a lot of companies that target developers, and they want them to buy their goods and products. And I I'm uh, I'm actually I pay for a lot of different services. There's also this idea that developers don't value their time. So uh, yes, we do. <laughs> I think that's the first thing is, you know, I am super busy. I have a, a family kids. I also have a full time job. So I do this YouTube stuff for fun. And you know, my time is very limited. So you know, I do charge for it if I, I do sometimes take on you know, a little contract work here and there, but I do charge for that. And, but so my time is worth a lot. Uh, if you need to learn a technology, you can Google and research it for hours on end, or you can buy a course. So that's one thing I've heard a lot is that people say, why should you even buy for courses or people who buy alg like when one thing I've heard of quite a bit is there is a website called Leet Code where you can uh, look up problems, but it only has a limited set of problems. And if you're looking to get the full set, you have to pay. Um, but people have said, well, you can just look up in Google and YouTube and all these different places if you want to practice, you know, these coding interview problems. But there's so many, but why do that when you can just spend like 50 bucks or 100 bucks somewhere and then you get hundreds 
of high quality coding examples that you can use. And that's the same thing I think about with technology. Yes, you can certainly look through the official documentation of all these different sites, look up blogs, look up YouTube videos, but sometimes it just makes more sense to buy a course and you can get it all in one place. Uh, there's a, this is famous example I put down here, my head's in the way, you probably can't see it very well. But this is, uh, so there was an announcement uh, many years ago in 2007 when Dropbox came out. And one famous comment from this is that this user said, well, I can do this all by myself. I can set up an FTP account. Um, it doesn't replace a USB drive. It doesn't seem viral or income generating. This is, uh, this. so th there's a few things wrong with this. Of course, any developer could have created what Dropbox is, but who wants to go through setting all this up when you can easily uh, just buy a service that does it all for you because because developers do value their time. So there's also this idea developers are immune to marketing. And if that's true, then I wouldn't see ads like this every day. So I, I am on Facebook and I see ads like this all the time. There's always ads about um, me wanting to learn new technologies or boot camps. Here's one for Bubble, which is a node code boot camp. And so I can click on it and learn about no, the no code movement. And so the companies are paying thousands and millions of dollars to target people just like me to get them get people like me to buy their services, to buy their educational products, to use their hosting. Uh, there's sponsors that contact me every day. Many of my friends get contacted too uh, to to promote their products because people do listen to us and and they these companies want to reach more developers. So developers are definitely immune to marketing. Uh, some. People, uh, some developers hate marketing altogether, but I mean, it works, definitely works. And there's also this idea that developers only buy things for $10. I've heard this before too. You know, I've sold lots of courses over $10. I've sold, I've sold $10 courses, I've, sent, I've sold $20 courses, I've sold $100 courses, I've sold $300 courses. So this is absolutely not true. Um, some of my favorite creators, Adam Ratham, Web, Web Bo uh, West Boss, Dev Web, Sim Web Dev Simplified, which is another fellow YouTuber, we all sell courses for more than ten dollars. I think there there is there's a lot of value in buying a more expensive course because you get more one-on-one -on -one hand holding. You can ask more questions. I have courses. I'll give you a link in the description below. I have a View 360 course, which is a six week program where you learn, where you learn Vue.js, where you can get, you can personal connection with me. I'll answer your questions. We even have like assignments every week. So it's a pretty intense course. It's a lot of fun. And uh, if you want that type of community there, it's out there. You do have to pay a little bit more than $10 though. So what have we learned today? It really comes down to fear and limiting mindset. So you once you hear about this online world as a developer and you start thinking about, you know, what you can sell, don't let these things get in your head because it's going to be uh, it's going to be a problem. I see this all the time. Um, I knew, last year a lot of people created new ebooks and I've seen a lot of them that could have charged $50, $60 and they were charging like $10. And I'm thinking like that product you created is worth so much more than $10. And a few people sold thousands and thousands of copies and made, you know, 10, 10, 15,000. And I'm sure a lot of other people try to do that same thing and only sold a couple, you know, made a couple hundred bucks. But so don't devalue what you create. Always make sure that what you put out there is valuable. You don't have to sell it for $10 or $5. You can actually sell it for more. So uh, a couple other things to make sure you don't do is don't get in the idea that no one will ever buy my product there's people out there that will. I mean, if you put a lot of time and effort and it's what your, you know, people who are listening and listening to you and, and watching you, people will buy it. The, you also get this idea that the, the market is saturated. What can I offer? I mean, there's a lot of books out from last year of people teaching people how to make money online, how to write um, books. There's a lot of uh, how to write technical books, how to write blog articles. I mean, there's a lot of books that have the very similar topics. But that doesn't mean the market's saturated. There is definitely a place for you and me. And then uh, another limiting belief is selling marketing is just evil. Like look at Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, or Boiler Room. And I see this a lot too, even with some big influencers or big people in the tech space who assume that, you know, you just create amazing epic content and you put it out there and it'll naturally rise to the top and people will come and follow you. And that's absolutely not true. There is many, many great products and, and, and educational tools and, and SaaS apps and things out there that never get the light of day because they don't have any marketing behind them. 
you don't go out there and market it, tell people about it, get people excited about it, build a reputation, like no one's gonna see it. So it doesn't matter how good the product is. So don't think of of selling like when you see Glen Gary, Glen Ross always be closing like that really slime ball way of, of selling or in boiler room where it's super high pressure and you're cold calling people all day. Now think of it as you're giving away something of value um, in exchange for money and that you're putting your reputation on the line. So, and uh, also if they build it, you know, they won't come. Fortunately, you do need a market unless you're one of these people like Wes Boss or Adam Wathen. I mean, that guy just tweets out one thing and he'll get a million retweets. Fortunately, people like us, we have to work really, really hard to get any eyeballs on this stuff out there. And there's also speaking about Adam Wathen, and we talk about this more in the podcast. So if you made it all the way in, make sure you check out the Self Taught or Not podcast season three that just dropped today. But there's this whole idea of like being useful, helping others, doing a lot of stuff for free, um, do, giving back to the community because it really does help um, build a reputation with people so they know, like, and trust you and that they, they may buy your products in the future. Thanks. So tell me, I've rambled on here for about 10 minutes. Do you agree or disagree? Leave a comment below. Was this too much? I usually don't go over these type of topics on my channel. Usually I'm very technical, but I felt like this would be a, a, a fun topic and also let you guys know about the podcast that just dropped today. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.